And now for those of you who haven't yet met a wimp, here's Fred. <laughs> Thank you, Mac. Yes. WIMP actually is an easy way of using a computer without typing in all the usual codes and incantations. In fact, for a lot of uses, you can forget about the keyboard altogether. WIMP, W-I-M-P, stands for Windows, Icons, Mouse and Pull-Down Menu. Right, well, what's all that about? This is the mouse. It's a rollerball device, as you can see. As I move it around on the desktop, I'm also moving this arrow around on the screen. Right, that's the mouse. Now pull down menus. A few of those up here. There's one, another, and a third. Now this is another alternative to typing in. So, for example, if I want to enter the word redraw, instead of keying it in, I simply point to it and select. Windows are these things here, the boxes on the screen. Now you can think of those as sheets of paper on a desk. Using the mouse, I can swap them over, I can move them about, let's put that one in the front again, move it down, and I can even change the size if I want to. And icons are these images here, these symbols which represent the programs you might want to select. So let's load up the demos file, right, I move the mouse to it and press a button and straight away up comes another window and some more icons, each of which is a program that I might run. Well, firstly, I'll kill off uh, this window here and tidy up the screen a bit. Get shot of that. Move this to the top. Now, ready to load something up. I'll try this program here, which is called Lines. Once again, move to it, click the button, and up it comes. This is a graphics demonstration, so it really needs to be big. So simplicity itself to move to the top, stretch the window, and there it is. And that gives you some idea of what the WIMP philosophy offers. But so far, this hasn't done anything that you might not have seen on other machines. This, though, is the new Commodore Amiga, and it can do a lot more than the micros you may be used to. And to show that, well, let's try another demonstration here, this boxes demo. Then I'll stretch that one again, move it to the top, make it a bit bigger. Now, you'll notice that the Lines program carries on running. And, in fact, all the time I've been speaking down here, hiding away, is yet another program. This is another nice facility, being able to bring the screen on. So, you see, we've got three programs going there. This, you see, is a multitasking machine. Each of these programs gets a share of the computer's time. The computer switches from the Lines program to the Boxes program to the Triangles program thousands of times every second. Well, of course, the more programs you run, the slower each one gets. Look how jerkily that triangles program is moving. But if I remove some of these others here, kill that off, kill that and that, watch what happens to the speed. Those triangles are drawing much quicker now. It's got the processor all to itself so the program can run faster. Well, you may be wondering how the Amiga gets this sort of speed. In fact, it's got a 32-bit microprocessor, and that means it works on chunks of data four times the size of conventional 8-bit machines, and it uses modern chips, which are faster anyway. Here's the motherboard from inside, and this is the 32-bit microprocessor. The smart design doesn't stop there, though. Here are some custom chips, specially designed chips. These two here handle the graphics and the animation, and this one handles just the sound. So the processor doesn't have to do all the thinking for the machine. It can delegate certain specialist tasks while it gets on with other things. And there's another advantage that comes from using these custom chips. They can pack a lot of functions into a single integrated circuit. And the result is a computer with very few components, which is cheaper to make and more difficult to copy. Now, the graphics chip will generate over 4,000 colours on screen at the same time, as you can see here. Although, in normal use, you'll have to make do with just 32, I'm afraid. But you can get some pretty snazzy animation, as we've set up over here. This they call Robo City. Now, if you wanted a complicated animation like this on a conventional micro, firstly, you'd have to compromise on the colours. But you'd also have to get the software to manipulate those characters, remembering, say, that the, uh, the old man here moves behind the fire hydrant, but in front of the female robot, and so on.
The Amiga has dedicated hardware, those custom chips, to look after the drawing and the redrawing, replacing the background and so on. Right, well, much as I like that demo, I'll pull that one down and move on to the sound, because sound is normally the forgotten feature of a micro. Traditional sound chips give you a rather crude quality. But with custom-built chips, you can get quality like this. I find that pretty stunning. That is actually stereo sound. And it's a sign of how seriously they take the sound facilities of this machine that you can get more sounds by loading in directly the digitized sound files from the Fairlight, one of the most sophisticated of the professional computer musical instruments. Uh, if you don't fancy the old uh, strings touch, what about this one? Heavy man. It's also got text-to-speech facility, which you may remember we demonstrated in our re review of speech chips in Programme 1. Well, all this is fine, but what's it going to be used for? Well, multitasking has real uses. You can leave the machine to get on with, say, printing a long document at the same time as word processing and while the computer's sorting out some records on your database. But there does seem to be some confusion as to who this machine is aimed at. In the States, it's marketed as a home micro at about uh, $1,500. Well, bigger disposable incomes, of course, over there. But in the UK, they're planning to launch it as a small business machine, which perhaps means that some of the facilities, such as this, are just not going to be used. Of course, any machine lives or dies by its software. There is an IBM emulation package for the Amiga, giving business users access to at least the top 25 IBM PC programs. But it takes time for software houses to learn the tricks of a new machine. In the meantime, you might make do with something like this. It's a graphics package which I'm not going to attempt to work myself. It's being worked live from upstairs in the gallery. It'll move about images, it'll distort them, it'll do anything you want it to do virtually. And it gives facilities which you would normally get only on dedicated graphics systems. No wonder it got a standing ovation at the Writers' Conference this week.